Okay, I thought I'd show the finished uh, product, at least the top of this guitar, now that it's all uh, essentially completed, ready to assemble. Um, the, many of you probably play guitar, you don't realize there's a lot going on under the top of a seal string guitar. It's not just a piece of spruce. First, the major structural braces are these, are they called the X braces. These here, these are, uh, have a, a, <clears throat> a joint in the middle, a lap joint. And then you have a big upper transverse brace that stiffens the top and makes it flat so that, you, that your neck can attach to a sturdy part of the body. All the sound comes from this lower part. So uh, X braces, and then we have tone bars, two that cross into the, from the treble to the bass end of the guitar. Um, you have little finger braces, which are just support the top a little bit, and I think do add a little bit of tone. These are all spruce. In this case, I had made them out of nice old growth red spruce, as is the top. This is the bridge plate. This backs up the bridge where the strings will be attached right here later. Um, and then right around the sound hole, you have these little thin pieces of nice quarter sawn spruce that just support the grain around the sound hole. So this, this needs to be stiff, okay? I counted, so this is a book matched piece of spruce, old growth red spruce out of an old log. It's actually the same log that one of the three I made the table in the Baxter Park headquarters out of. I junked off two feet before we um, saw that for this purpose, actually. Uh, this is now, what, uh, 12 years later. I counted from the center out. This is, of course, perfectly radial sawn, quarter sawn, 124 rings. Uh, on each side. So there's what, 248 rings across the top of this beautiful piece of spruce. Um, here's the front side. It's pretty much sanded out. I put in a bird's eye maple rosette with a little black, white, black purfling around it. And then I also bound the sound hole with a little piece of the same stuff. So this is still roughed out. I've now f uh, fit these braces. Oh, wait, before we do that, I want to see if we can get the tap tune. What you do is you put these in rough and then you spend, actually, I spent hours actually. This probably goes faster if you really know what you're doing. Um, but this is, you know, you don't get a second chance once you remove the wood. I use this little cool little finger plane, which allows you to shave these off. Notice that these in cross section are scalloped, they're called, you know, so they, uh, three inches from the end is where sound waves apparently reflect back on each other. So it's a dead spot on the top. So you want the maximum flex in between those spots on the edge of the guitar where it flexes against the side and then here as well. So uh, so you, you basically just keep taking off wood and then you tap the top. Let's, this may or may not come through. Until you get a nice resonance and actually sustain. I'm not sure I'm getting what I really want here or not, but I don't dare take off any more wood off the braces. Uh, clearly, you can keep going, but if you, at some point, right, this has to resist, what is 180 pounds, I think, of pull on the steel string guitar. So that's a, actually a pretty, that's about as much as I weigh. So that's me standing on a, a lever, pulling on this against this uh, spruce top, which is only two and a half millimeters or three thirty seconds of an inch thick, sanded down, and the braces are not all that heavy. This thing probably only weighs six ounces, right? So we're going to, this is now fit. We'll put this into the body. I'm, you can see I'm using a mold here, and I will now, the next step is to close up the box. The back is already glued up. This is a mahogany back and sides on this uh, guitar. You can see that it's sort of sanded out, but it, it needs to be flush trimmed and everything once this top is glued on. So, stay tuned.